Okay, we are nearly ready for paint. Very exciting times. I've been spending the last three or four days blocking this thing back and getting it ready. It has been quite a job. My back is completely fucked. My hands are red raw and bleeding from the sandpaper. But for the most part, it's pretty much nearly there. Just got a few little bits and pieces to, to finish off. So I've gone over it with 400 wet and then over it again with 600 wet. And it has taken a while. I think the high build is pretty hard. It's been sitting around for a while, so it's, it's gone really hard. And I think if I was to do it again, I'd probably just start out with a 320 dry or something, um, go over it and then hit it with the 400 and then hit it with the 600. I know there's like an extra step there, but I think it still would have been quicker because Blocking it with the 400, it just yeah, took ages um, to sort of block out them orange peely kind of bits. It takes the top off quick, but yeah, trying to block out that orange peely um, uh, sort of surface, it, it takes a while. The 320 just yeah, bites in a lot more. So yeah, probably should have done that. But anyway, it's nearly there. Now the beauty of wet rubbing is once you finish rubbing, you can clean off the panel and then wipe some water on it and the water just pretty much replicates the clear coat and it will show up any imperfections if you've got them in there so yeah as you can see that looks pretty good I'm pretty happy with that you can see the LED lights in the um, reflection as well. So that's also a good indicator. If you've got any highs and lows, you'll see sort of warpage within, within, that, within that light. So yeah, that's really flat. Okay, I've been extremely busy getting this car ready for paint and have just been blocking all the panels back and getting them ready. Now all the panels, they're nearly there and I've got a mate that's come and give me a hand and we sort of decided to start pulling stuff apart again and get some things painted before we do the final spray. So as you can see, the top of the cow has been painted and I've got that color matched with this uh, sample piece of vinyl. That's the color I'm gonna be using for the interior. So we'll be wrapping the seats and the uh, dash and everything in that color. So I took that piece around and they color matched it. So it's a little bit dark, um, but it's only just been painted. So I'm hoping that's gonna kind of sort of fade out, flatten out a little bit more overnight. But anyway, it's not too bad. So yeah, that's all done. And just got that in a uh, 2K, two to one um, satin finish. So yeah, happy with that. Moving around to the front of the engine, ended up pulling all the front apart and updating the paint. Now, the reason why we've done this is it looked pretty dull, the engine, compared to the rest of the engine bay. All the rest is all um, new paint. There's all brand new parts and everything's all nice looking, but the engine was letting it down uh, it was sitting around for 12 years, this engine. It is a rebuilt engine. It's not done any kilometers, but obviously sitting around for a while, it's just, yeah, it went really dull. So yeah, sprayed it in um, epoxy and then just used a two pack, uh, two to one direct gloss um, black paint over that. And I think that's gonna look really good once it's uh, all back together. And yeah, sprayed the same paint on all these uh, brackets. So you just yeah, sprayed the epoxy over them and then yeah, the direct gloss. And that turned out really good. So just the brackets at the back of the cab, the bumper brackets, ended up updating the look of the alternator brackets. So I think they're gonna look good as well. I've got a black alternator, so that's yeah, gonna keep with that theme. Uh, bonnet, latch, um, and yeah, Got the, um, these covers for the, the A-pillar in the interior. So yeah, they're all painted up as well. Decided to paint the radiator in black also. So that was, yeah, like a, a shiny alloy um, radiator, but sort of, yeah, I thought it would definitely update the radiator. This is, yeah, 12 years old also. It's brand new, but it just, yeah, was sort of tarnished and looked kind of old. So. 
yeah, I think that's um, freshened it up a lot. That's going to look good in the engine bay. Um, yeah, painted the water pump. That's come up really good. And decided to update the look of the carby and spray the uh, carby bowls, which you sort of see in the engine bay. So I think that's going to make that carby look a lot updated as well. Um, had an alloy catch can, so painted that black as well. Um, breather and decided to spray the plastic on the um, power steering uh, pump reservoir so it was just sort of that off brownie color that just kind of you know like your washer bottle brownie color so it just looked yeah pretty pretty shit so I just thought I'd yeah paint that got the um, yeah them kick panels um, on the interior so yeah just use a press a plastic primer before we sprayed the um, the colour on there and then also the same with the reservoir on this user plastic primer and pretty much everything else all the alloy um, yeah spray the epoxy on all this stuff before we sprayed the um, the the black paint so I think that is really gonna freshen up the engine bay and the black is gonna really look good against that yellow in the engine bay there's a lot of yellow in the uh, engine bay so I think yeah, with the black in there, it's really gonna kind of pop, I guess, in there. If you kind of got this um, this bonnet catch, but if you kind of look at that, yeah, that black against that yellow, it's um, it looks really good, I think. Okay, so we've got all these panels all rubbed back and she's pretty much all ready to tape up. I've given it a decent wash, so it's good to see it all washed up and clean again. Got all rid of that residue and stuff from the high build. Got the bowls put back on there and I think that's made that carby look a hell of a lot better. It's freshened that up. Still got to put the front of the engine back together, but you can see how nice that engines come up as well so yeah pretty much ready to start taping it up giving the shed a good clean out hosed out the floors so yeah we'll just start the process of taping up <coughs> Okay, so she's all pretty much ready to spray in the morning. Have spent a fairly long time masking it all up. There was two of us masking it up. It took a lot longer than what we thought, but it's yeah, just a bit of a kind of finicky job to mask it up and getting all in the door jams and trying to avoid any overspray getting in there or any sort of uh, sharp edges. So using this foam tape in the door jams that leaves a soft edge so that's going to be yeah that's yeah pretty handy stuff backs all done just got to put some paper over there and then i'll put a drop sheet over the back here and then also we'll run around the bottom with some uh, uh paper as well just to stop any overspray from getting underneath but we're just letting all the floors dry out ended up spraying all the floors with water and, and washing all the floors out. Spray sort of the walls and um, the roller doors with water and just got rid of any dust in here. So it's all pretty clean in here. Um, so yeah, it's all looking pretty, pretty nice and pretty excited to get this sprayed in color finally. Now that is the tape. So that's the soft edge foam masking tape from 3M. So there's the part number there if anyone is interested. I just ordered that online. All that engine bay, that's all masked up as well. Used some soft tape in there as well. And around the front here. I put a drop sheet over, the, um, over there as well in the morning. The bumper, that's all ready to go. We'll put a drop sheet over the table and the uh, bonnet is all ready to go. I've masked up underneath as well. Stop any overspray getting up uh, underneath. Over here is where we got all the paint laid out. Got the mixing cups, 
strainers, tack rags, gloves, everything is all ready to go. So yeah, we'll start laying this paint in the morning. <laughs> okay, as you can see, it's been painted and apologies, I didn't film any of it. I didn't want to get over spray on the lens and the camera. So I just, yeah, didn't bother filming any of it. Now today is Saturday, it got sprayed on the Tuesday and I've kind of just been sitting on this for a few days now. But basically, I'm not really sure what to think about it and I'm just probably not really 100% happy with the, with the finish of it. Now, I'll run through a few of the issues um, and I'm hoping you'll be able to pick it up on the camera. I'm not sure whether you'll see it on the camera or not. But basically down this side, you can see uh, just all down here, it's all blotchy. Um, you can see it on the top of the door as well and even a bit of the guard, but it's definitely more noticeable sort of below this line here. It's all just, yeah, blotchy down the side there. And I'm guessing that's probably gonna be in the base coat. Um, so if it's in the base coat, I'm thinking it's probably gonna need to be resprayed. Uh, and then also another issue is with the, um, the clear coat, you can just see this is all like a nice smooth glassy finish so all here looks nice um, and yeah it's smooth it's glassy but then down the side here it's just really um, textured and it just seems like the the clear is um, inconsistent so you can just sort of see here it's just got that kind of dull and dry looking appearance when you when you look down where it should sort of yeah have that that glassy sort of flat look now i know that's probably all fixable um it's got three coats of clear so it can be probably rubbed back and um and and buffed and, and to bring it all up in the clear but the problem is i think that base coat to fix that um blotchiness it's probably going to need to be resprayed now another issue is within the banana lines. Now originally I used a stencil and blocked in the banana lines into the uh, high build and uh, there was a few little areas that didn't seem right so we ended up putting a little bit more of that dolphin glaze uh, putty in and just fixed them little areas up and then we put some high build over the top and because we done that I thought I'd re-block the banana line in so because I really wanted to to highlight the um, banana lines or, or keep the banana lines. And I think what's happened is because I originally blocked it in and, and then I blocked it in the second time, used a stencil. The stencil might have just been slightly above the original one or below it. Um, and I think what, I, what I've done is I've blocked in the two banana lines, which is, yeah, you can sort of see here, it's just, yeah, kind of weird looking. So yeah, look, that's probably another thing need to sort out. Now the bonnet, it's not too bad. It's got that glassy look to it. Um, it feels nice and smooth. Uh, there's a little bit of shit in it, but you can kind of feel it and all that would sort of rub and buff out. But there is a bit of an issue here. Um, if you can see all that, all this bit here. Now I think that's in the clear. I'm not really exactly sure what that is. Potentially solvent boil or, or something like that, but Anyway, that's gonna need to be fixed as well. So I'm thinking it probably need to be rubbed back and re-cleared. Now I've reached out to someone that is very experienced in spraying the DNA paint. So he's gonna come around and have a look at it, just get that professional second opinion on it. So I'm trying not to overthink it too much. I'll just wait for him to come around and figure out where to go to from here. But I do have a gut feeling to get the finish that I'm after, it's probably going to need to be re-sprayed again, which is, um, which is kind of pretty annoying because it's gonna set me back um, for Rocky Nats, but I just can't leave it like this and take it to a show with the finish that it is in right now. So even if we rub and buff it back, get the clear coat up, that, um, that blotchiness in the, in the uh, base coat um, it's still, it's still going to be there. So, and also them banana lines, they're still going to be there as, as well. So I'm thinking probably just going to need to be resprayed, which is kind of pretty annoying because, um, yeah, there's a lot of yeah time and money. The paint's not bloody cheap. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, um, quite, quite annoying. 
but overall, look, it does look good. Um, like all the all the panels are straight, like the way the shave gutters are, all that looks all nice. The, the uh, shave door handles has turned up really nice. Like it does look really nice and smooth. The bumper has turned out nice, color matched. Um, so overall it does look good, but it's just that, uh, that finish in it, it's just not up to the standard that I'm after. So I didn't really want to post this episode up. I've kind of been pretty bummed about the whole situation, but after thinking about it for a few days, I've been pretty open, honest, and transparent with this whole build. So I think, yeah, it needs to be sort of posted up. So I guess I've got to figure out what's next. I'll wait for old mate to come and then we'll come up with a bit of a game plan. It's definitely a setback, but I still do have things to do. I'll get the inside painted, can start fitting the sound dead now. I've got the seats I need to modify and mount and um, a few other bits and pieces I can continue on with, but there's really no point of putting this all back together again until I figure out what I'm gonna do with this paint. Also hit the like and subscribe button, leave a comment on your thoughts, and uh, we'll see you next time on Shinky Garage. Cheers.